Right, grade fours, we are looking at NST and today we're looking at the water cycle. Now, there are quite a few things that you need to know here and there's a lot of words that you need to know and terms that you need to know. Remember when you're answering questions about the water cycle, make sure you explain yourself carefully and properly. Let's have a look at the picture on screen. We've got a little picture of the sea and the water in the sea is liquid. Okay, that's quite important. And when the sun heats up that water, Okay, the sun provides the heat. When the sun heats up that water, evaporation takes place. All right, remember evaporation is a process. It's when liquid changes into a gas. So you can see over there that the liquid is evaporating and changing into a gas. All right, and that's because the, the sun heated the water up. Then it cools down. As it rises, as it rises, it cools down and then changes back into a liquid. And this process is called condensation. Remember the last NST that we spoke about? I said condensation and evaporation are processes. Um, it's something that happens over a period of time. So the liquid heats up to form a gas and this is called evaporation. Then as it rises, it cools down and it becomes clouds. All the little water vapor droplets, be or the water vapor become little droplets as they cool down and they clump together to form clouds. That's condensation. And when that cloud gets so heavy, it rains down. Water droplets fall to the earth as rain and this is also known as precipitation. Just a fancy word for rain. And then, of course, it rains or it snows onto the mountaintops or joins up rivers. The water joins up to rivers and it could even fall onto the ground and go underwater, underground and it all goes back to the sea again. And the whole process starts again. So liquid heated up to become a gas called evaporation. As it rises, it cools back to being a liquid again. That's condensation when it becomes the clouds. It then falls down to the earth as rain or precipitation and goes back into the sea again. And that's why it's called a cycle, because it never ever ends. It goes around and around and around. Now, I've put the picture here without any labels. You try and have a look at it and see if you can explain the water, the, um, water cycle, well, the water cycle, the process um, as it goes around in your own words. Remember, you've got to use all those fancy terms that we learned about, okay? Because the more that you can use them properly in sentences, the more scientific you sound. Questions your teacher could ask you. She could give you a picture of the water cycle and ask you to label it. She could ask you to write five sentences on the water cycle. She could ask you to draw the water cycle as well. Okay? Or she could ask you various questions. She could say, what is the process called when water is heated by the sun to form um, a gas? Things like that. Okay. 